well hello again. In this example you will learn how to create influence lines for trusses. We're going to take a look at this particular truss and identify the influence lines for these three bars BC, BG, and NFG. That would be these three bars and so what becomes obvious to us here is using the method of sections will get us those quantities the quickest. The process for developing influence lines for trusses is that we need to take a unit load and we need to place it at each of the panel points. So here's the panels right here and that gives me five panel points. And then we take a unit load and we place it across so either here, 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 or here. Sometimes people get confused and they want to apply them up here. I want you to simply think of where would you drive your car on this if this was a bridge? Would you drive the car up and over like this? Or would you drive the car through here? And if you can answer that question then you know where those point loads should be applied. So it's the ones that I've got there. I'm going to clear this off and just highlight one more time. You'll place a unit load there, then there, then there, then there, and there. Now we can create the influence lines by doing statics and solving for these quantities. But experience has shown that the most important thing for you to do is to go ahead and resolve in your own mind how you're going to solve for those unknown quantities. So I'm going to step you through that for this particular example. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the reaction at AY. I'm going to find this right here and I'm even going to answer how I'm going to achieve that. I will some moments about point E. So regardless of where the load is being placed, I'm going to some moments about point E to solve for the reaction at AY. I will then make a cut through BC, BG, and FG and then sketch the free body diagram looking at the left section. Now remember, by now, I would have the reaction of RAY, and so it's got to show up down here. Once again, let me stress that we are simply doing this no matter where the unit load is being placed. If you get this figured out at the front, life becomes a lot less confusing for you. So let's go ahead and do the analysis. We'll analyze all the panel points. First, we want to look at when the load is at point A. right here. I'm also going to give us information on the slopes of these members because we will need them as we proceed with the analysis. This is a 3, 4, 5. Okay, so if I sum moments about point E, I will find that the reaction to AY is 1. So let me drop that down here. Now let's get the rest of the statics figured out. I can solve for NFG if I sum moments about point B. I can then solve for NBC if I sum moments about point G. I can then solve for NBG if I sum forces in the Y direction. So I'm not going to write out all of the equilibrium equations. I've told you what equilibrium equations I would use. And I'm going to simply tell you what I would find from this analysis. I would find that the axial force in each of those bars is zero. Let's look when we place the load at F. Remember, I will sum moments about point E to get this reaction. Then I will sum moments about point B on this free body diagram after I made the cut right through here. Some moments about B and that will give me N if G is equal to 1. Some moments about G that will give me N B C is equal to negative 0 0.52 and then I will sum forces in the Y that will give me NBG equal to negative 
3. Those will only work out as long as you make sure that you have that unit load here on your free body diagram that was cut. Let's now place the unit load at G. Some moments about point E to solve for this reaction. 0 0.5. Look where the unit load comes down here. It's at G, so it does not show up on the free body diagram. But that doesn't bother us. We will simply use the same statics procedure that we have identified previously, and we will get the following quantities. zero point four two there. So we can move the load over to point H, run through the exact same sequence, once again not being disturbed if that unit load doesn't show up on the free body diagram. We simply won't reinvent the statics. And then lastly at point E. So really the last step is going to be to take all these response quantities for the loads at different locations and transfer them over here onto our influence line. We'll do this explicitly for a couple of these. So say when the load is at A, notice that the reaction at A, Y, is 1, but the internal forces are all 0. So let's go ahead and plot those out here, all of those being 0. We then put it at F, and the response quantities are 1, negative 0 0.52, negative 0 0.63. So let's go get those. Negative 0 0.52, negative 0 0.63, and 1. Don't be confused by the sequence in which these are being presented here. They don't necessarily follow the same sequence that we used for the statics. Okay, then in a like fashion, we just keep pulling that information. Negative 1.03, depending on where the load was being applied, 0 0.42. 0 0.67, negative 0 0.52, 0 0.21, 0 0.33, and then lastly these zeros. And then it's a matter of connecting the dots with straight lines. And finally here. That's a set of influence lines for trusses. That concludes this example. As always, it's a beautiful day to study structures.